Join me in prayer. Loving God, you have held us in your hands from the beginning of time, and you will hold us until the end. There is no affliction that can crush us. There is no confusion that can trap us in despair. There is no abandonment that leaves us outside of your presence. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Brene Brown is a research professor at the University of Houston. She's also a very well-known author. If you follow any podcast aimed at helping people to be better people, you've probably heard her speak. One of her areas of focus is vulnerability. Quoting from her about Brene Page on her website, she says, I believe that you have to walk through vulnerability to get to courage. Therefore, embrace the suck. I try to be grateful every day, and my motto right now is courage over comfort. <laughs> you might be able to tell from her rather colorful language that she is also a Texan. The Texan part may be the least important part of Dr. Brown. She uses her first name in most of her work, I have been taught better than that, and since I'm heading back to school next week, I have to get in practice. So I'm going to call her Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown's work has been focused on helping us be who we really are. She encourages us to drop the pretense and just be. We all know that we are messed up humans. It may be only in the deepest part of the night that we dare to admit this to ourselves. Or we may be a little overly emotional and spill our guts about every single misstep and mean thought and loss we have ever suffered. Dr. Brown is encouraging us to walk through our shame and our guilt and our regret with the courage of those who know they are loved. She probably doesn't say it that way, but Paul does. I have held a view of Paul in my mind for many, many years. I imagined him as stern and stoic. He did not show any emotion. He lived purely in his brain and never walked through his heart. He was the perfect man's man. No emotion, no vulnerability, no weakness. I'm not sure where I got that idea. It isn't biblical at all. In fact, having had all these years of education and experience, I know that that is entirely Stoic philosophy. Stoicism is currently having a moment of revival. And it is in this revival that we can see the impact this way of thinking has had on Christian thought. Stoicism was in the water of the culture in the time of Jesus and Paul. It began around 300 BCE. Stoics believed that a well-lived life focused on four virtues, wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice. Those all seem like really good virtues. And Jesus would have been exposed to them like we're exposed to Taylor Swift. She's just part of our culture, even if we can't sing any of her songs. But Jesus and Paul were not Stoics. Stoics would not have shown emotion. They would have worked through every problem with wisdom. Wisdom within a, without any excitement of the drama of life. When you think of Spock from Star Trek, you're thinking of an ideal Stoic. But Jesus wept. That was one verse that all the children in Sunday school could quote. And weeping would not do for a Stoic. When we weep, we are indulging in our feelings. And Paul, that man was so full of emotions, it is almost embarrassing. How is it that the manliest man of the New Testament 
should be weeping and carrying on about death and life, living side by side in the bodies that are fragile as clay jars. How dare he brag that he has been perplexed? Shouldn't the man who wrote the majority of our New Testament be self-assured? Shouldn't he have all the answers at hand? Shouldn't he be victorious in all things and have a set of six-pack abs? <laughs> yeah, maybe not. If Jesus and Paul weren't walking through life with cool detachment like the Stoics, perhaps we shouldn't either. We are carrying this amazing light and life of God in these bodies. We have chemicals flowing through our veins and electricity zooming along our nerves. We are these con complicated, multifaceted creatures. And we are exactly like and completely different from every other creature in our world. We have a future. A future of life and life abundant, and it is dwelling in us now at the same time our bodies are carrying our death and loss and our vulnerability. Dr. Brown's work on vulnerability teaches us that we are meant to feel our feelings and deal with our stuff. And we can do that. We can deal with our stuff only if we acknowledge it. If it cannot be mentioned, it cannot be managed. So we, like Paul, drag all our stuff out in the middle of the living room floor, and we begin to sort through it. And there, in the midst of it, we find Jesus. Jesus, who has been with us from the moment we were born, and will stay with us until we die. We find him both crucified and glorified. We see the man who weeped over his friend Lazarus and rejoiced at the wedding over a glass or two of wine. Jesus who left heaven and came to earth to live as one of us with all our vulnerability and was killed for his courage to proclaim who he was. Jesus has given us the ability to live into who we are, all of who we are. We do not have to hide our soft hearts and our eyes wet with tears. We do not have to mask our joy at the beauty that God pours over our lives. We are free. We are free in the clay jars that will one day be smashed against the ground, broken up into a million pieces, and discarded in the trash pile. We are free in the new body we will receive on that day of rejoicing when we too will slip into the arms of our Savior, welcomed with the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. And we will see our bodies remade without any of the sickness, illness, frailness, and fault. We will be reborn, remade, received into the glory with the saints in light. Beloved, rejoice. Live into the magnificent future God has for us. Live freely. Live fully. Embrace vulnerability with the full assurance of the love of God found in Christ Jesus, for which we and all of creation can say, thanks be to God. Amen.